I wanted to talk about that revenue increase that you had of 5%, and maybe 5 to 6% is going to 20, uh, 30, 2023. How much of that is going to come from a growing international base that you don't have yet, and how much of that is going to come from your current portfolio? I would say about two-thirds coming from new products and about a third in geographic expansion. So going to places like Japan and China, we are, have good presence, but our product portfolio is not complete. So how do you view then all the trade disputes that we're seeing in D.C. with China, with Europe, et cetera? How do you view that as CEO? We hope that, that this gets resolved and it seems that the news are, are getting there. Uh, but it is, um, we are a Chinese company in China. We make 90% of our products in China for China. So despite the fact that we import some of the products, uh, will not affect us to the great extent that may affect other companies. So as we showed in the chart, you've had quite a run. Uh, you've been very successful during your tenure there as CEO. What's the motor on your business? Because you're not like a pharmaceutical company with a lot of patents and things, right? No, we are a injectable pharmaceutical company that has medical devices as well. So if you've been in healthcare, you touched our products. Uh, if you've been in a hospital, you may have entered in contact with an, one of our injection uh, uh, injectable products. Uh, so we are in base healthcare. We are in every hospital, in every clinic. We also in chronic disease with dialysis products they're sold worldwide. What's your comparative advantage as opposed to your competitors? We have positions number one and two because we have the ability to produce this product on a global basis and we also have the ability to deploy a supply chain across the globe. How much of your growth in earnings has been because of top line growth revenue as opposed to you've been very effective in cost cutting as I understand as well? Yes we've been. Uh, our growth on the top line is always important because that was uh, we were able to get our margins uh, going up, our gross margins going up, but we removed uh, this year a cumulative of almost $900 million in costs from our, mm -hmm. our, our SG&A. How, how, how do you take $900 million out? That's a lot. And I guess this follow-up question that is, the first $900 million is usually the easiest. The next $900 million gets a lot harder. That's correct. But if uh, looking at a company, how do you do that? You go a zero-based budgeting exercise. You go in and take uh, layers out of the organization, make the organization simple, less bureaucratic, more pleasant for our em employees to be engaged. But at the same time, you remove things that are not necessary. And I'm sure that many companies around the globe have the same opportunity. It's just the courage to do it. Sometimes mm -hmm. not there. So along the same lines, how much money are you planning on spending on your business this year? We are spending uh, about 600 to $700 million in capital mm -hmm. in our business in improving plants and creating more capacity. So and then along those lines, what about your hiring costs? So you talk about taking costs out, you talk about spending money, but where are your costs rising? The cost of our uh, supply chain usually is well contained. We are a company that has uh, a significant amount of opportunities in continue to improve our supply chain. Uh, clearly, we're a company that also make a lot of plastic products, so PVC and non-PVC products. So we always have a chance of being affected by oil price, but that has been minimized because our cost reduction programs have offset that tremendously. Tell us about the overall size of the pie that you're, that you're taking a piece of. Uh, is that growing? Is it static? Are you taking market share or is the overall market growing? Uh, the market is going 3 to 4 percent and Baxter is growing 4 to 5 percent and then accelerating into 2023 to 5 to 6. So we're growing 100 to 200 basis points above our market growth rates. We are very happy with the markets that we currently compete in, but we are accelerating market share gains. So we hear a lot about Obamacare here and the attempts to curtail market, uh, Obamacare. There are fewer people covered by insurance today than there were a year ago. We also hear the administration and others talk about bending the cost curve. Does that pose a potential risk to you? Baxter believes that we should have coverage for more people. We, more people should be entitled to coverage in the U.S. and every place in the world. We have the ability to service all these patients, if they're covered or not, because we're in the hospital business, we are in a chronic disease business. So when you come to the hospital, paying the bill or not paying the bill, being covered or not being covered, our products are essential to healthcare.
But if pe fewer people are covered, doesn't that mean they're seeking and obtaining less medical services? And does that mean that not as many people are using Baxter product? Um, when people get sick, they get sick. They've got to go to the hospital either through an emergency room access or uh, through a primary care physician. So if you don't have a primary care physician, you end up crashing the hospital, unfortunately, through the ER. Uh, no matter where you go into the hospital, you'll have, you have one of our products with you. What if there are less hospitals? Uh, the volume doesn't change. So less hospitals. No, but, no, but the idea, if you have mergers, right, and then two hospitals become one, they only have, instead of having 20 beds, they're going to have 10. I mean, th that's going to be a marginal reduction. Uh, there is. There's a shift between acute, acute care into more of the home, into less expensive venues. This is uh, one of the, the ability for the hospitals to come together and merge. But the volume of patients is not changing. We still have people getting sick getting the flu, going to the hospital, getting treatment. And this is when people use Baxter products. Our products are using ICU for people who are really sick. Uh, no matter if they're mergers in hospital, we still have ICUs, we still have beds. People still need to be treated. The merger of hospitals, it is the, it's a way of creating synergies on the infrastructure cost, not necessarily remove beds from the system. It's also a way of increasing the uh, pricing power of the hospitals. I mean, That's it, correct. It, there's one thing of how many products are being sold, the other is how much you get to charge for. Are you seeing downward pressure because of the consolidation of some of your customers? Our products are not el uh, elective devices for healthcare. We are not in the, in the pacemaker business, we're not in the valve business, we're in basic healthcare. Injectable, saline, glucose, antibiotics, dialysis products. So those products usually have more stable pricing. What is the biggest worry that you have right now as a CEO? As a CEO internally to the company, it's about our ability to really shift the culture permanently to a culture of agility, courage, and speed. If we can do that, we're going to continue to evolve into a company that is innovative, a company that continues to deliver the bottom line, but through a good growth on the top line. But, but when you're debating whether or not you're going to make an investment decision, mm -hmm. What does that hinge on for you? It hinges on the demographics. It hinges upon the size of the market in the future and our ability to grow that market or grow with the market. So I not DC, not what comes down the pipe from there, not any geopolitical risks. Like how do you, how do you as a CEO view that lens? There's geopolitical reasons. If you ask me, are you going to invest money in Venezuela today? I would say, no, we will not. But are you know, you're going to invest money in China for sure. Why? Because the demographics are there. No matter what the trade war and, and, and where this takes us, there's still patients in China needing our treatment. So geopolitical changes are part of the conversation, but more importantly are about the therapies that we can bring innovation to the market.